And good evening. Uh, my name is Federico Ree from uh, Melbourne, Australia, and this is Inspire Talk, another great show tonight lined up. Um, and I'll introduce our, our special guest in just a moment. Um, but also um, joining us tonight is my amazing co host, Stuart Harris, in sunny Brisbane. How are you, Stuart? Yeah, good night, Federico. Thanks very much. It's not so sunny tonight because it's pouring with rain outside. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it, would you? But um, yeah, no, great to be here and looking forward to our guest tonight. Absolutely. And um, look, we do have a bit of a technical glitch at the moment. Um, so, uh, it seems to be a little bit slow, but hopefully Google will do its work to um, smooth it out. Now, before we introduce Joe, um, as Stuart, perhaps if you want to give the viewers uh, listening in from all around the world a bit of an understanding of what Inspire Talk is, so that they can sort of um, understand what what we're all about in in essence. Yeah, thanks, Federico. Well, look, we we have a lot of fun uh, putting together Inspire Talk and bringing together um, some some world-renowned speakers. We've got one tonight, but we've had quite a few wonderful speakers uh, leading up to this particular time in the year and. Um, all of these speakers bring something special. They bring a story, they bring some hot tips which they can give to our audience. And usually our audience can take away and apply things into their lives or their businesses that, that make a big difference in the end. So a really, really exciting uh, event and really exciting speakers that we have on board. Thanks, Stuart. Look, it has been a lot of fun and we've been running these shows um, Formerly for about a year, although we did run these shows before then under a different brand. Um, but I must say that um, the people that we, we have um, attracted uh, have been amazing, and, and certainly tonight we have one of the best. And uh, without saying too much more, and um, if we don't want to wait, make our, our guests wait for too long, uh, welcome Joe. Joe Cross, how are you, Joe? G'day, Federico. How are you doing? I'm not hey, too bad, thanks. I'm absolutely fine. Now, I know that you're. <laughs> there you go. Currently um, in in New York, um, and you've you've only kind of just woken up, and um, I must say I I thank you uh, sincerely for for making this time available to, uh, this morning. So it's probably what about six o'clock in the morning there. It's six o three here, uh, Federico and Stuart in New York City. It's um the sun is just coming up. Um, it's uh the middle of summer here. It's August. Um, and I don't know if many of the listeners or viewers um. Are aware of this, but August is probably the worst time um, of the summer to be in New York City because it's uh, it's hot and it's humid, and uh, most people get out of the city. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to take it on this summer. I'm going to stay here for the rest of the month, um, pr primarily for two reasons. It's my first time giving it a go, and I like the new experiences. But also, the Olympics are on, as you guys know, and they start up pretty soon. And New York's only an hour behind Rio, and so that's a pretty good time zone to be able to sit in my living room in the uh, in the late hours of the night and watch the uh, watch the games. Look, it sounds like a, pl a place to be at the moment, and certainly uh, when you're living in Melbourne in winter, it's not too much fun, as you could probably appreciate being an Aussie yourself. Um, and and um, you, you also live in Sydney, and you do travel backwards and forwards. Is that right? Yeah, I try to um, to spend um, about two to three months of the year in Australia. Generally during the summer, because you know I'm I'm not stupid. I like to follow the sun, um, but I, that doesn't always work out that way. But uh, I I'm 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 sort of trying about two to three months in Australia, about two months um, on the road in Europe, and then the balance of the time in the US, with with probably half of that time in New York, depending on on travel commitments and and touring and and talking and filming and. And whatever we've got on our on our slate. Interesting. So, look, speaking of your tours and your filming and, and, and et cetera, and your en endeavours, I guess just for the audience, I'd like to formally introduce you, Joe. And um, I've got here a, a quick uh, profile of yourself, and I'll just read it out for everyone's sake. Uh, Joe Cross is the founder, chairman, and CEO of Reboot Holdings Proprietary Limited, a health and lifestyle brand that creates entertaining and actionable educational media for anyone that is sick and tired of being sick and fat. Joe is also the co-director, executive producer, host and subject of two feature films, Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead, and also Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead number two, and he currently lives in New York and Sydney. Now, I must confess, uh, Joe, I, I first came across your profile about a year ago when um, I, I was sitting in front of the TV, my wife and I said, what, can we, what do you want to watch tonight? And I said to her, well, why don't we look at something that's healthy and perhaps a documentary? 
So as we were doing a search, we came across obviously your amazing documentary, and we got um, quite attracted to your mission, um, your your whole concept of you know going out to um, to the public and presenting your your philosophy to healthy eating. And um, according to the statistics here, which are quite impressive, um, one of the things that you accomplished um, over a 60-day period to begin with was actually losing a lot of weight. Um, on, 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 on yourself and um, a total of 45 kilos, if I'm right. Is that correct, Joe? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, so um, obviously you, you had a bit of work there to do and um, you, you, you felt that the best way to do it was to drink smoothies for two months. Is that correct? Not so much smoothies, uh, more more on the juice side of life. Um, we can get into the differences between a smoothie and a juice later, Frederick, if that's important to the viewers. But look, essentially what happened was um, I was a pretty typical average Aussie bloke, um, which meant I loved my food, I loved my beer, I loved going out, loved hanging out with my mates, loved the barbie, um, I worked hard, um, I was someone who used to play footy when I was young and um, work came along, I started working in the finance industry at the Sydney Futures Exchange and built my own business, started my own entrepreneurial company at 28 for the for my first time. And once, you know, when you're playing footy in your teens and your early 20s and all of a sudden work responsibilities and work pressures come along, the sport and the exercise gets pushed out the back. The pizzas and the hamburgers and the fast food takeaway get elevated because there's lack of time to make and prepare your own meals. And all of a sudden, it doesn't take too long before you do that for 10 or 15 years and my system broke and you know the bottom line is is that if you ignore those biological laws of cause and effect you will break and so it's one of those things where um, you know I suffered from nutritional ignorance is what I like to say and um, the system broke down and, and what happened was I got an, an illness was a chronic um, autoimmune disease called chronic urticaria angioedema, which is effectively my body was attacking itself. Um, a fancy word for saying, you know, chronic hives, but really serious, deep, um, uncomfortable and, 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 and life-threatening hives because if it got into my throat, my esophagus could swell up and that would be game over. So I had to carry an EpiPen everywhere I went in case I started getting swelling so you could, you know, give yourself an anaphylactic shock reaction. So this, this went on for eight years and that was from the age of 32 to 40, and so basically most of my 30s, I was I was not 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 a not a healthy uh, uh, boy, and so then at the age of 40, I kind of woke up and realised that you know I was 145 kilos. I was drinking, I was smoking, I was not exercising. You know, I was I was fat, I was sick, and as I like to say, I was nearly dead, one foot in the grave. And I decided, you know. This this is not this isn't this wasn't in the brochure of life that I had planned out. You know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, pre-diabetic, um, all of these problems, and I'm only forty. Like, what's my life going to be like when I'm fifty or sixty if I don't do something about this? So that was kind of like a big a big sort of as Oprah would say, aha moment. And um, just as luck would happen, a buddy of mine said, Joe, you know. If you're going to make some serious changes in your life, perhaps you should put it on film. Now, I, I'd never made a film before. I'd never been in front of a camera before, but I just sold that business I talked about that I started when I was 28. I actually sold that when I was 40, and I did, did quite well out of it financially. So I had the resources to allocate to something like this from a film point of view. There was, there was never any business idea associated with it. It was, all, it was actually more about giving back than it was about creating something or taking something. And, um, you know, there was also a selfishness about wanting to get well myself, of course. And so then I, um, and this, was, this was 2007, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. I, I, I went on a journey where I just drank fresh fruit and vegetable juice extracted from plants. I did that for 60 days and didn't eat anything else, just 60 days of juice. During that period of time, I lost 82 pounds, which is sort of in the high 30s for kilos. I then did three months um, of eating just fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, seeds, and whole grains, with, of course, juicing as well. 
and that's when smoothies came in. Um, and I did that for another three months. So after five months in total, 60 days of juice and three months of eating plants, I was off all medication. By then I was 45 kilos down in total. And um, I had a movement, um, well, I had started a movement and I had a film to finish. It took another two years to finish the film because I went out and filmed people who saw me were doing what I was doing and I followed them. And, uh, and that movie's called Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. It's been seen by 25 million people. We launched it in 2011. Um, since then, I appreciate your bio update. I should have given you my most recent one. I've actually done two more feature films. The right. Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead 2 and then The Kids Menu, which I've just released this year on Netflix. And um, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll take a break now and give you a chance to ask some questions. But that's basically the that's basically the synopsis of, of how I got to uh, got going in the movie business. Look, it's a great um, summary of yourself, Joe, and I'm sure that uh, there's so much more that you can offer us during the show tonight. Um, so, look, I, I can understand why you travelled to America. I guess um, you know, in America, there there is a bit of a, a wellness issue there, and um, you, you probably found that to be your your ideal target market. And obviously. Um, you know, you, you had a vision of going out there and achieving, uh, as you've said, um, starting a movement, and you, you certainly have created a movement. And looking at some of the statistics that I've got here in front of me, and I'm sure that these have changed since I I, I looked these up. Um, you've amassed over 130,000 followers on Twitter, uh, over 800,000 likes on Facebook, and as you've stated, um, several million views on YouTube for your um, various movies. That that is certainly uh, a, a massive accomplishment. Um, you know, as a as a visionary, as a, as an entrepreneur, I guess starting out with with an idea that you had, and literally you took a gamble. You went out there and um, you disrupted the industry to some extent. So, look, I I like to I would like to focus uh, a lot of the show tonight around you know um, the the, um, the mindset of, of an entrepreneur and obviously what led you to do what you did. But before we go into that any further, I probably want to give Stuart an opportunity to maybe ask a particular question um, that he's formulated. So, Stuart, on to you. Uh, yeah, look, thanks, Federico. And and look, uh, you probably are experiencing a bit of a, a lag in the uh, video here, so I think that's coming from my end somehow, uh, so apologies for that. But look, Joe, really inspiring to hear what, what you've just uh, outlined to us. And uh, one of the questions I, I, I had here, which may be a bit early in the piece, was what, what, what are the key points that you would... Uh, advice to somebody who is going to follow in your footsteps and put together uh, maybe some some key focus films that are about helping other people get things right in their life or creating the right brochure, as, as you uh, quite quite succinctly put it. So, so Stuart, just to clarify, because it just a little bit of a problem hearing you. Were you saying that if people wanted to follow in my footsteps in the film business or in the business of influencing? Uh, well, look, it would probably be both, Joe, because um, you know, obviously, uh, they they want to create a message, maybe that that's for a specific audience. But um, quite often nowadays, you, you do it through film, right? So, um, yeah. So, yeah, probably a combination of both of those. <clears throat> right. So, so I guess that um, I, I guess it's it's a very good question because um, you know, I'm in the business of storytelling. And, and telling a story is, is fundamental to humanity. I mean, we've been telling stories ever since we've been around. Whether it's you know a three hundred million dollar blockbuster like Jason Bourne that's just come out this weekend, or whether it was five men and women sitting around a fire, you know, three million years ago. So storytelling is is innate in all of us, and I think that humans respond better to stories that are told um, from a sharing point of view rather than a preaching point of view. I think, I think preaching and telling people what to do is difficult. Um, some people like that, but majority don't. People prefer to be more shown what to do as opposed to be told what to do. Um, and I think that where I came from in my storytelling, which um, which uh, you know was a personal story, is that it was very real. There was no um, there, there was no intent to start a movement. Believe it or not, like that was 
that was probably one of the most important things. It was more about, I have something to share, I have something to do, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to share it, and we'll see what happens. But I think that, that, that you know, people have incredible um, bullshit detectors built into them, and they can tell when something's been done as a sales pitch to them, and there's there's no reality, there's no there's no underlying truth or soul to it. So, <clears throat> so my advice would be that you have to be real. It has to be true, um, and, and and you you really have to be passionate about it because that passion will will sort of pour through the imagery, whether it's film or whether it's a book or whether it's an Instagram account, a Twitter account, a website, a blog, whatever whatever the form of medium of communication is, um, and I and I think that that's probably the fundamental part. I also believe that luck luck plays a huge role in um, in success, and anyone who tells you that luck isn't involved, I think they don't. You know. I, I, I struggle with that. I don't, I don't say they're wrong because I don't think many people are wrong. I just, I just disagree um, with people more than saying they're wrong because it's just an opinion. But in my humble opinion, luck plays a huge role. Now, look, my movie, um, I started filming this in 2007. And if you think about that, I mean, you know, YouTube only started in July of 2005. Um, Netflix was a red envelope um, delivery system of DVDs and video cassettes before it went streaming. My movie was made, it came out in 2011. Netflix streaming was just getting going in 2011. So they needed content. I was in the right place at the right time where my content was picked up by Netflix. These days it's not easy to get on Netflix. These days if you make a film, it's much more difficult to get onto that platform. So I was lucky. Um, I I would also say that you've got to be prepared to take risk. I mean, you've got to be you've got to really be prepared to put it all on the line and and really give it a go from a financial point of view because that's what I did. I can tell you now. What started as something where I thought you know I'll put a million dollars into, ended up being four or five times that by the time I actually got going. And I had no idea it was going to be that kind of a, an investment. Um, but you've got to have, you know, you've got to take huge risk. Uh, I also say you've got to be, you know, passionate, really passionate about what it is you're doing. And then the third thing I'd say would be um, you've got to, you know, make sacrifices. You've got to really apply yourself. You, you can't leave. You can't leave anything. Anything. Um, you've got to leave everything out there on the field. Is probably another way of saying it. So. So these are the, are, the, are the things that I would share, you know, risk, passion, um, sacrifice, understanding luck, how important it is, and, and, and honesty and being true. I just want to jump in there, actually, but I'm quite passionate. <laughs> Sorry, Stuart, I'll let you go. Okay. Thanks, uh, Federico. So, uh, so Joe, I just wanted to uh, just quickly explore the uh, that that moment in time where it became, uh, you know, um, the break point from what it was originally. Your luck's kicked in. The, the passion's been driving it, but all of a sudden, you now have a following, and, and there's a business flourishing. Because a lot of people never reach that point, and they don't they don't realise how close they get, right? So, are you able to just describe that a little bit to us and, and when that happens and, and what people should do when, when they're approaching that point? Yeah. Um, so, the point you're talking about was well described in a, um, in a book I read a long time ago called Crossing the Chasm. I don't know if you remember it or I don't even know if that's the name of the book, but that was the, the part of the book that, that struck out to me. And you know, so many businesses start off and they get this sort of, you know, d directional push where things are looking good, but then they get to a point where they've got to cross the chasm because most businesses, 99% or whatever was in the, fall into this chasm, they, they don't cross it and then keep going. And I could probably argue that I'm still not sure if I've crossed the chasm, you know, because it's it's now 
nine years later from when I started that journey, and I'm still pushing every day. I'm still out there battling, and it's still, it's still, um, you know, uh, all hands on deck work. But I would say that that for me, I've never given up. There's never been a day where I've given up. There's never been a time where I I haven't um, felt that that I'm on the right track. Now, let me let me just clarify what I mean by that. Is that sure? I've I've made mistakes. I've made plenty of them, and and that's part of the the world of being in business. But it's how I respond to those mistakes, and it's how you handle those, um, and it's a lot of it's about taking responsibility and moving on, as opposed to sitting and dwelling on it. Um, you know, I've had partnerships and business partnerships um, with 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 big corporations that, you know, um, you know, that don't move at the same speed as my humble team of nine staff here in New York work at, and that can be incredibly frustrating, but it's rewarding. On the other hand, because some of these companies have massive distribution, so there there are frustrating moments along the way. I, I guess that to try and get to your point, you know, when the movie broke on Netflix in July of 2011, and you know you couldn't buy a juice extractor machine in the U.S. in Walmart, in Target, in you know retail stores, to get an understanding, the juice extractor market was about 150 million dollars a year in sales. After my movie came out, it jumped to 273 million um, the next year. So we added about 120 million of value to a category because people saw the movie and said, "Right, I want to do what Joe did," and rushed out and bought a machine. That was incredibly rewarding. After 2007 to 2012, five years of people thinking, "What's Joe doing in the edit room in New York City? He's gone mad." Because no one knew what we had, no one, no one saw anything, no one, no one knew that uh, what I knew, and I knew that I had something that was pretty, um, pretty uh, exciting and pretty special to share with the world. So it's that ability to push through, to maintain the, 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 the focus, um, and so that when it does come, when success does come, sometimes it's difficult to recognise. Sometimes you don't see it because you're too you're too um, focused on what you're trying to do and I would argue that probably I'm still like a, like that a bit today. It's interesting how you describe that story, uh, Joe, and I'm not sure if Stuart's still here with us. Um, I think his image has disappeared but I'm sure he's listening in. In the meantime, I'll probably just jump in and say this. There's no doubt that you're a leader, you're a disruptor, you're a pioneer, you're an influencer, um, et cetera, et cetera, and, and I can relate to all of that myself as an entrepreneur. And as an entrepreneur, we do face challenges, we do face uh, many obstacles. Um, you, you've mentioned some of those obstacles and, and perhaps made a remark that, you know, um, yes, it takes luck, you, you know, passion involved. I, I just want to focus a little bit more on the challenge um, or the challenges that you faced in, in getting to that point that you are now because a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs um, find it, you know, constantly challenging just to get off the ground, and then maybe when you've reached um, the first level, then you know they start to lose uh, the big picture because it starts to get too hard with resources or money or people or or the skeptics. The skeptics out there might start to push you back. So I guess my question is, what would you say is the number one, or what would be one of the the greatest challenges you faced? Um, you know, doing what you did so far, and even now, what what is still your greatest challenge? Um, the greatest challenge, I think, uh, I would say probably still the greatest challenge is finding the right people to execute the plan. Um, you know, staff and 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 I've got good people. Don't get me wrong, and and if any of them are listening, they know I, I think the world of them. But that's where I am today. In the very beginning, when I was starting off. Um, trying to attract the right talent pool, trying to to get um, myself up to speed in a category that I really didn't know a lot about. Um, learning social media because you know really if you think about it, from 2007 to now, it really has been the age of, of social media and and um, communities and you know. Technology has played a huge role in that, and 
I came from a finance background, not a technology background, so getting my head around that. So, so these these hurdles of, of finding the right talent, um, educating myself enough, um, you know, like I, I made a mistake early on in the piece where, uh, you know, had I known what I know now about how Facebook's platform has evolved, I would never have spent, you know, a quarter million dollars on software for in-house development that we started spending in 2009, for example, because I didn't know where the thing was going. I'm not saying I should have known because not many people did, but that's an example of, um, of, of going down a rabbit hole or going down a place. So I think that their challenges, I'm, I'm trying to zero in on your, on your, your, your point being, you know, what's the greatest, um, the greatest challenge I've had. I, I would say um, I'm in the business of helping people, okay? And when you help people, you're generally helping the people that need it the most, and they're generally at the bottom of the socioeconomic um, table. And asking or trying to sell a product to that group, that sort of goes against my, my nature. So I think what's also been difficult for us has been trying to work out a, 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 a money-generating business off something where you're providing hope and inspiration, and so to sort of that they sort of a, the capitalism versus the generosity and the giving side um, come together, and so we rely on sponsorship from bigger corporations to get a message out. You know, we rely on revenue from Apple TV and Netflix, and and you know these days people don't want to pay to watch things; they want things for free. So it's not. It, it, the challenges are trying to work out what's the best way to extract the revenue stream out to keep the dream alive. That's probably the, the biggest challenge. That's really good advice, Joe. And I'm sure the listeners are there, you know, scribbling a lot of notes. And um, you know, if I was an aspiring entrepreneur, I, I'd probably have at least 20 good, great, great points there to, to, to note. Um, I'm conscious of time too, and and perhaps I might give um, Stuart an opportunity to ask another question, and perhaps we'll be wrapping up uh, in the next uh, five or ten minutes. Uh, so, Stuart, on to you, mate. Uh, so, look, um, thanks, Federico. Really, really appreciate the content coming out of you tonight, Joe. That you're really coming up with some gold nugget stuff, and um, you know, I'm sure our audience are enjoying this. Uh, we actually have got a question from one of our audience. It's probably a little little bit off off centre, but she she raised the question. This is from Michelle. She's raised the question uh, with, with your running a, a full juice diet, particularly around uh, fruit and vegetables. She says that there would be a lot of sugar content in that, and how would you compensate for that high volume of sugar? Given that there seems to be such an awareness of sugar these days in in their diet. Yeah, good question from Michelle. Thanks, Stuart. So um, I, I would say rather than spending too much time on that detail, Michelle, I would say if you hit, hit our website, rebootwithjoe.com, and take a look, we are uh, huge fans of the 80-20 rule, which means 80% of the volume of our juice comes from vegetables and 20% comes from fruit. So, for example, if I'm going to make a what I call, say, a mean green juice, which is cucumber, celery, um, ginger, lemon, kale, and an apple. Um, I can make up with two apples and two big cucumbers, five, six stalks of celery, um, six or seven handfuls of kale, and half a lemon. I can generally make, given that Michelle, I'm assuming, is in Australia, I'll do it in litres, I can generally get about 800 mils to, to a one litre of, uh, of juice from that, and I've only used two apples. So I've got like two, two big glasses like this, and it's only, it's only the equivalent of having one apple, but I'm getting a cucumber, I'm having two celery sticks. So I'm getting an enormous amount of uh, micronutrients from the vegetables. So yes, we have to be very careful of sugar content, but we are dealing with the, the plant world, and uh, when I talk about sugar, been cut down. I, I much prefer to talk about the processed uh, side of the game and refined carbohydrates and sort of cutting out that angle rather than 
the uh, plant world. Uh, but it is a good point, and, and in all my books and in all of our content, we, we do dwell on that. Um, now, there are exceptions. If you're going to go for a workout, if you're going to do exercise in the morning, um, you know, then it's, it, it's perhaps not going to be need to, to stick to such strict um, rules. But if you're uh, in a juice-only environment then, um, and you're doing what we call a reboot, then uh, we like you to stick to that because you'll get a lot better results. Awesome, awesome. So look, moving to, uh, well, really from personal health to uh, marketing health, can I ask you, Joe, what, what, what methods do you utilise to get yourself heard in amongst all the noise in today's digital world? I mean, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, I mean, you name it. We're here right now on Google Hangouts. There's so much noise, right? How do you get the message out through all that? Yeah, well, it's getting harder and harder, Stuart. Um, and, uh, you know, I would say that, 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 that as an example, um, you know, what we have found is that our newsletter, our own email address collection over the years has proved to be far more valuable than, say, for example, our following on, on social media via Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. I think there is a tremendous amount of noise there where um, people are, um, you know, this, this idea of 15 seconds, 45 seconds, two minutes, you know, I, th I think this is getting harder and harder and harder to penetrate, which is why I sort of made a decision, you know, six years ago to go long form. So you'll find that I'm in the business of creating 90 minute documentaries which is harder than doing a two minute and five minute video and more expensive. But I think that, you know, if, if I've got a platform like Netflix with 82 million subscribers worldwide and my movie is on their platform and it's sitting there and I have three of them, um, you'd be surprised how many people watch one of my films, say, last night. It's probably two and a half, three thousand people around the world gave me an hour and a half last night. Um, in front of their Samsung or Philips big TV in their living room. And when you're, when you're with someone for an hour and a half and you're sharing stories that connect, you're, you then get some follow through of whether it's buying into the, into the world of Reboot and signing up, whether it's going out and buying a machine through our website, whether it's taking on a health coach. So we have found that our strategy to date has been the long form film world using Netflix, using Hulu, using um, Apple TV as our distribution platform. So trying to rise above all the noise of the short stuff to be more long and substantial and, and more meaningful. I'm not saying that's going to work, but that's what we've done today. In the future, um, believe it or not, we're going to be resorting back to TV. Um, I think that, that uh, television still plays a huge role and uh, from a category of, of where we are, the infomercial world of have, buying a half hour of television to share a solution and to share a, um, a, a, a system and a, and, a, and a way that you can, you know, in 30 days really change your life um, in a big way, more so than anything else I've ever seen in terms of 30 days. I mean. You give me anyone, and you, I, I put them on a reboot for 30 days, and I will tell you now, you will, you will, you will struggle to see anyone who gets better results in a shorter period of time than by doing what we are talking about. And, and I didn't invent this. This is part of human nature. You know, we are supposed to go for periods of time without eating. I mean, this idea of having three meals a day, where'd that come from? You know, we're five million years old as a species, and up until 100 years ago, we were still having famines where we wouldn't, have eat, we wouldn't eat for a few weeks or days at a time. These days, there's a feast on every corner. So all I'm doing, I haven't invented anything, I'm just enabling people to remember what they've forgotten. And so to try and help people remember what they've forgotten, using that power of television, when you get a half hour, once again, that's long form in my eyes, and I feel that, you know, I'm not so much the soundbite guy. What I'm talking about here are fundamental 
changes that need to take place in your life, and you can't, you know, you can't do that in sound bites. So I, I totally support your legacy of um, healthy eating. In fact, I've, I've got my pineapple here ready for tonight. <laughs> um, you haven't mentioned pineapple, but I thought you would. Yeah, but I'll, one of my favourite juices, Federico: pineapple, watermelon, and ginger. Well, that's great advice for the for the listeners. Um, um, what I, what I'd like to do is probably wrap up shortly and just say this: that you've, you've offered us and viewers a lot of golden nuggets as we call it in this show and for those I suppose aspiring entrepreneurs that want to you know pursue a goal like yours that um, certainly has been very ambitious if you look back 10 or so years um, some of the top tips you've, you've offered um, I've noted down such as giving back uh, it is about um, you know a bit of social entrepreneurship as it is also about making money um, Starting a movement and obviously getting um, a community of people behind you to support you, uh, telling a story, uh, being real, being passionate, um, obviously luck plays a part in that, um, making mistakes, learning how to handle those mistakes and most importantly moving on from those mistakes and one of the key um, recipes I guess uh, in, in any form of success is finding the right type of people uh, and also learning um, to, to exploit and, and um, utilize social media as, as you've stated towards the end of the point, um, the last point you've made. So um, I, I, look, I'd like to say thank you, Joe, for, for your time. I know that um, you're a busy man and you've got um, a lot of other uh, goals and pursuits even today. Um, I'm, I'm honored to have you on the show and um, it's, it's been um, an absolute blessing for me to have you tonight So or this morning. So thanks again, Joe. And uh, before we do wrap up, I want to give Stuart an opportunity to perhaps um, Make a quick mention of our forthcoming event uh, and anything else he wishes to say. Yeah, thanks, Federico. So we've got uh, coming up uh, next week, actually, Jacob Warwick uh, with <clears throat> some considerable digital marketing expertise, and I think that's going to be particularly poignant for, for a lot of people is understanding how, how to make digital marketing work. That's on August the 9th, and then we've got uh, following up that uh, Sam Moran, and Sam has come from the entertainment world, um, and he didn't do that quite so simply. So um, we're going to hear about his story and how he how he had a lot of fun and made a big success out of out of entertainment. And that's all coming up very soon on Inspire Talk. Thanks, Federico. Very exciting, Stuart, and thanks again. Um, and Joe, once again, uh, thanks for your time. I, I wish you all the best. I'm sure you'll be doing uh, amazingly well. And I do have one quick question. Are you planning to release number three of um, your, your series of, of, of documentaries? So I always said if um, I'm going to do a Fat, Sick and Lead Dead 3, it would have to involve science in a big way. And um, I'd really want it to be about the science of what's going on in the body, and I'd like it to be part of a study that we could get printed into the uh, the halls, the annals of uh, of medical uh, literature. So it's a big project, and um, I haven't forgotten about it. I'm still sort of working in the background, but a project of that size is going to require a fair bit more success by us down the road. So it, it's it's something that I, I, I I'm not saying um, it's not happening, Federico, but I'm saying at the moment it's still just a twinkle in my eye, but. Um, We'll have to sort of wait and see where it ends up. Absolutely. Look, it sounds like work in progress, but it's certainly exciting, and I'll be tuning in once uh, you make an announcement. Um, so um, what we'll do now is um, wrap up and um, go off air in just a moment. So thanks again, Joe, and thanks to you, Stuart. Thanks, too. guys. It's been great to be on the show. appreciate it, and I uh, wish you guys luck with what you're doing here, spreading the word about inspiration and, and, uh, and thought leadership. I think it's fabulous. Fantastic, and thanks again. Bye, guys. Thank you, Joe.